Well, a sector that could do with some innovation at the moment is retailing. The big bricks and mortar retailers that rely on discretionary spending are in the doldrums, and if you can believe their spin, a large part of that is because of the rise of internet shopping. Throw in the fact that Australians in the post-GFC world are spending a lot less on their credit cards, and you could almost feel sorry for them. A man who doesn't feel sorry for them, though, is retail analyst Peter Ryan, who's with me now. And Peter, are the bricks and mortar retailers responding well to this challenge? The short answer to that question is no, they're not. Uh, and I think they're, they're wildly overestimating the impact of online shopping and reacting to it out of fear rather than out of sound competitive strategy. You know, the reality of online shopping at the moment is even if you take the best figures, it's 6% of retail. It's growing at 25% allegedly, if you believe the claims that are being made. And yet physical retail is growing at 2%. Uh, we're now spending record amounts of dollars in physical stores, but it's only growing at 2%. The problem has been that five years leading up to the global financial crisis, we saw growth rates around 7%. And people, to be perfectly honest, got drunk on it. They got used to 7% growth, and now they can't cope with the fact that physical retail is growing at about 2%. If you add physical retail and virtual retail together, we're getting about 4% growth, which is the long-term average for retail in this country anyway. But what's happening with online retail is it's becoming a pricing comparison tool. And while it may only represent 6% of sales, it's infecting 100% of pricing decisions. And that's certainly the spin that's coming from the big bricks and mortar retailers. So what can they do to meet that challenge? I think the first thing you have to realise is that human beings for three and a half thousand years have actually liked going to a physical place to interact to buy and sell goods. Uh, and I don't think that's going to change. I think it's hot-wired into the DNA of human beings that we actually like to go places. However, the big thing in the 21st century is time. You know, we have a personal KPI now called return on time, and unless we see a return on our time, we're not going to blow it. Uh, and therefore, online shopping is the ultimate convenience. You don't have to waste any time. You've got a finger and you've got a computer sitting in front of you. Here you go. If physical retail keeps dumbing things down to a commodity level where it's just about price, and therefore they have to slash away at the experience, um, and the customer goes, well, this is no better than what I can get online. Why would I come here? They're in trouble. And when you say slash away at experience, I presume you're talking about staff numbers, customer service and things like that, which we've seen a lot from a lot of the big retailers lately. I think what's happened in, in physical retail, rather, is that uh, the instant reaction has been match price. The problem with that, of course, is that we've got a, an increasing cost base and then a decreasing top line, and margin goes south as well, which means that profitability isn't there. And therefore, in order to survive, what retailers do is they look at all of the, 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 the big cost lines, the biggest one being labour, and they start cutting those in order to be able to survive. The problem with that, though, is it plays into the very hands of online shopping. You're taking away the things that are most effective at competing with online retail, which is part of the interaction between human beings. So as well as good service, what else can the big bricks and mortar retailers do to lift that shopping experience to make people want to invest their time, as you say? Well, I think the first thing is that, that the experience when you go there as a customer has to firstly be incredibly relevant to you, right here, right now, not waste any of your time but be very efficient. And secondly, I think it needs to be something that you can physically feel. You know, in the 21st century, we've gotten to a point where we try to over-rationalise everything. We've become incredibly, incredibly fixated on things we can measure. But the reality of most of why we buy is that it's subconscious and unconscious, and we have five senses that are picking up information and telling us whether we're actually enjoying this or not. And oftentimes in retail, we forget about all of that. We simply go to rational things. Now, the reality, for example, uh, at a simple level, is customers don't buy a price. They buy a product. They build up a motivation that they want that item. Yes, then they'll try to get it at the cheapest price, but they want the item. Half the time today, you don't even see the item, you just see the price. You just see 70% off. Or, and that language and, and that tonality is becoming blunter and blunter as far as the customer is concerned. They're kind of over seeing red ink everywhere. They're trying to look for excitement. And the other part of it is, is realising that in the 21st century, it's no longer about need shopping. It's actually about wants. Uh, most people in the mature Western world have everything they will ever need. They don't need another pair of shoes. They might want them, but they don't need them. They don't need another jacket. 
might want it, but they don't need it. In which case, you've got to excite them. And there's a lot of excitement gone out of physical retail. Can you see bricks and mortar retailers evolving in years to come when a lot of the commodity items just won't be there and they'll be specialising in things that you really need to touch and feel and have a good experience about before you buy? I, th I think the reality is that there's a lot of retailers that'll go broke, uh, that'll be run out of business because they don't get it. I think there are a number of retailers who really will get it and will embrace it and will create fantastic experiences. And then I think there are other retailers that unfortunately sit in categories that probably are more naturally served online or in a more convenient way. Peter Ryan, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.